Oh my god, this reveals so much so poor of Taiwan <laughs> and they want to block this movie. <laughs> Hey everybody, I'm Nick. I'm a director living in Taiwan. And today I have with me Jenny Cho. She is the writer of our short film, Holding a Spark. And we're going to talk about a film that she introduced to me called The Sandwich Man, directed by three directors. What are their names? <laughs> um, three of them are Hou Xiaoxian, Zhen Zhuangxiang, and the last one is Wan Ren. And only Hou Xiaoxian is really became famous after this film, right? Um, I think they are... All famous in Taiwan, but like internationally famous is his only Ho Xiaoxian, yeah. right? And we've reviewed films of his before. So the the Sandwich Man is actually the name of the first short film directed by Ho Xiaoxian. Yes. Um, there are two more shorts in it. One's called Vicky's Hat, and yeah. the other one is called The Taste of Apples. And the three films are about uh, different people and how the economy and like the the society in the '60s in Taiwan. Kind of affects the people that live there, and it really shows like the impact of the kind of societal changes on everyday people. Yeah, there are three stories become a whole complete film. And first is um, there is a sandwich man. Like he actually he's a uh, like a walking commercial of uh, theaters. Yeah films and yeah. and why they call it a sandwich man is because he has to uh, dress up himself like a crown crown and he wear uh, costumes and put a lot of ads of the films behind him and the back of him yeah. <laughs> and walking on the street and people was oh the advertisement yeah and it's like a really <laughs> humiliating kind of job like he dresses yeah. really and his uncle like makes fun of him and yes yes says like you look like a freak and this kind of thing. but it's, i think it's because because that at that era people in taiwan in the 60s was very poor and most of people are farmers because that era uh taiwan was not really industrialized so yeah and and he maybe he d didn't really want to be a farmer and he doesn't have his own land so he wants to create his own his own yeah. job yeah. a very creative job but was teasing by a lot of people yeah 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 because he came up with the idea himself to do the job but then a lot of people are like saying like this is a useless job and the kids kind of make fun of him and bully yeah, him and stuff yeah, right. so. the second vicky's hat it also happened in a very uh, rural village in jia yi county it's called bu dai uh, there were two young men they came all the way far into Buddha and selling a cooking pot and it is said with that kind of pot you can cook very fast right. and bring to that uh, village and people are very curious about it but also refuse to um, try that new kind of in yeah invention. they think it's weird and kind of dangerous looking because it's it's yeah. really complicated and hard to use Right, and that two people, that two young men has very different kind of personality. One is really hardworking and maybe with a little unrealistic thought about being successful, and yeah. the other just doing nothing. And he said he come to work here is just because he want to run away from his family. Oh uh, yeah, and it's kind of it's about like the idea of like the traveling salesman. Like this is kind of a this is an interesting story from an American perspective because we have this idea as well. Of like these kind of men that really really want to be famous or not be famous be rich yes. and uh and they go out and they try to like sell stuff right. to make money so it's like i think uh, a lot of the shorts talk about how like this american perspective of entrepreneurship is like kind of introduced into taiwan and they right. and like the kind of conflict that it creates because it doesn't really fit within the society so the third story is the taste of apples it's interesting. This one was the one when I first watched it. I liked it the least, but then the more I think about it, I think I like it the most. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> I actually like it the least, but it's very interesting because from American point of view, you have a special kind of feeling, right? Right. So the, <laughs> the story of this one is that an American soldier uh, hits a laborer uh, on his way to what the embassy or something like that and he injures him really badly and so then he goes to the the family and he feels really bad so he invites the family to the hospital where they're keeping the they take him to like the nice american hospital and he pays them all this money and he gets them all this stuff 
and it's kind of a little bit about how like the family scene is really out of place in this like American environment right. and like they there's a lot of like comedy elements to it where like the right. little kids are like running around the bathroom and mm-hmm. playing and stuff and making fun of the soldiers and stuff like that so I mean the reason that I thought I didn't like it is because it's weirder it's more of like comedic than the other ones it's not as much of a yeah. drama but then I think the sim- symbolic elements of the third one are are really strong because mm-hmm. they there's a lot of details that I think are really interesting like the idea that uh, something really bad happens to the character but then it ends up being the best thing that ever happened to him because he gets all this money but then also it doesn't really fit like the, the it changes the characters the idea of the apple right. like they don't actually like the apple but they just but, yeah. they don't like the taste of it but they want to eat it because it's expensive right right yeah and so it's kind of like the idea of like american culture coming into taiwan where it's like taiwanese people don't it doesn't they don't really want it but yeah. they part of them wants it because they think this is what they should want yeah they cannot refuse but they it's like oh they have to we can yeah. try we have to try because yeah. it's new it's and they American. feel cool kind of cool when right. they do it but they right. don't really it doesn't really fit with their with what they really want and that's very sarcastic because they in the beginning they think they are very bad luck and they, they uh, he has two broken two, legs yes and and then in the in the end he found out oh my god this is actually good luck because yeah. some rich people can give me a lot of money and can send my dumb girl to America to <laughs> <laughs> to learn to learn right yeah. so it's like oh my god you, your life actually you cannot control your life it's right. very sarcastic and I think the whole thing is like a metaphor for like Taiwan how the director feels about America in Taiwan where it's like the reason that America is helping Taiwan is because America like screwed up in the first place <laughs> and so but then Taiwan gets this benefit of like having America protect it and take care of it right. but then at the same time there's a kind of feeling of like we don't we didn't do it for ourselves right it's so, like kind of feel good but also bad about the situation right and so Nick you said you know in the very beginning you did you didn't like the third yeah i didn't i didn't like it when i first watched uh-huh. it but then just the more i think about all the different details in it i kind of like it a lot uh-huh. actually i think i think the director is is kind of smart and i also thought the the comedy elements and the two little kids yeah, yeah, yeah. were really really good and really funny right it's it. really funny yeah and me personally, I like the first the most. Yeah. I mean, emotionally, because yeah. it's a pure story and most simple, and I cannot forget about in the ending scene. And I think a lot of the 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 point of this one and the point of all the stories is a little bit about like what men do to take care of their families. Right. You know, like all the different right. ways that fathers try have to try to take care of their their family, and I think that theme is the clearest in the first one. Yes. And it's the most touching in the first one. The interesting thing that you told me is that this film is the was the beginning of the Taiwanese New Wave. Yeah, yeah. So this is the film that changes it. And I think when you watch it, you can kind of recognize a shift between like a really old style of filmmaking, like with the, uh, the score and the music is very like old, more of an older right. style. <laughs> but you can see that, that this is like a transition movie because I think the themes and the way that the story is told and the slow pacing is a lot like the newer Taiwanese New Wave films. So it's an interesting movie to watch where you can kind of see that change from like like a movie like um, that we... What, what was that movie called, Luke? Yeah. The, the one... Uh, the A Touch of Zen. What's the Chinese name of that one? Taiji. No. A touch of Zen, some new, new, new shot, new shot. Oh. Yeah, like a movie like New Shot, and, and then you watch a movie like, uh, like Terrorizers. Like you can see, like this movie kind of fits in the middle, in the right. way that it's made. Right. Like you can see, like it's like a transition point. Right. Between the two. And also, I want to talk about the second mm. clip, and I think, I actually, I, I just said emotionally, I like the first. Movie. Right. And the second. About the story design, I like the second the most because there are two opposite young men and they doing different kind of thing about their work, mm-hmm, about their mm-hmm. job. But no matter, the, the other one work really hard, the other like just doesn't do anything. But two, the, two opposite line, but they lead to the same um, tragedy. 
right? right okay. First is it, he get hurt because of his product, and the other he realized like he really like a little girl, but he realized the little girl has has a really big problem with her head, and no matter it's like no matter how what kind of style, they they people they, in that era just very sad. <laughs> so so you're saying like it doesn't matter. The idea is like the two different characters are yeah. different, and they make different choices, but they lead to the same. Right. Outcome. Uh, that's an interesting idea. I mm -hmm. never really considered that. Like, it's a little bit of like a f can't avoid your fate kind of a situation. Right, right, right. right. <laughs> mm. Cool. So, uh, is there anything else you wanted to talk about with like the? You said you had some stories about like the background of the. Movie? Yeah, and this movie is the opening of Taiwan New Wave, and uh, when we said Taiwanese New Wave movie is from the eighteen eighties, and. At that time, Taiwan is not really a liberal country, and so a lot of movie have have to review by the government. And uh, when Hou Shaoxian and the producer they they started to uh, apply for the review for the movie, and they try to con uh, convey the government officials, they say, "Oh, this movie will um, present Taiwanese hardworking." So so uh, the I government really officials think that, "Oh, good, this is." Good movie and oh, represent so our spirit, but in the end, the government official found out. Oh my God, this review is so much so poor of Taiwan, <laughs> and they want to block this movie. But at that time, because a lot of um, film working people, they just work hard to look. Uh, 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 you uh, uh, persuade. Because we lobby, Taiwan, uh, uh, the, 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 lobby the, government the government official and a lot of journal journalists uh, report a lot of about this movie, and in the end, it finally can can release on for. Oh for wow! Audience. So the whole film industry kind of worked together to make sure that the movie got released. Right. Oh wow! Yeah. That's cool. That's really that's awesome. That's a cool story. <laughs> <laughs> and so, so the government didn't want to release it because of like at that time, 1983. It was like that was like martial law still, right? Mm -hmm. So the government mm -hmm. still had a lot of control over. Yeah, kind of still. Thing. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Okay, well, uh, Sandwich Man. If you if you can you can check it out on Amazon. It's, that's where I watched it. <laughs> uh, and if you like it, please let us know in the comments. If you have a movie that you want us to review, let us know in the comments and like, share, subscribe, and we'll see you next time. Bye bye. Bye.